2020 Friday continues once again. Barbara Walters. How we all love the Supremes. Well, everybody seems to have loved the Supremes, except the Supremes. Last night on 2020 Downtown, Mary Wilson, one of the original Supremes, accused Diana Ross of stealing the spotlight from the rest of the group. She also expressed other very bitter complaints about Diana Ross. 2020 had contacted Miss Ross's representative to ask her to appear in last night's story and would turn down. However, Diana Ross called me personally and said she hadn't known that the request had been made. She asked to be heard as well. Earlier today, we talked with Diana Ross to hear her side. First, some background. In the 1960s, the Supremes had more hit records than anyone in the world except the Beatles. Diana Ross rose to stardom in the female trio, then left the group in 1970 to launch a very successful solo career. Since that time, she has had hit songs, successful movies, sold out concerts, and five children, three grown daughters, and two young sons. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Diana Ross. Still glamorous and popular, she is celebrated in a current televised concert, VH1 Divas 2000, billed as a tribute to Diana Ross. Now for the first time in 30 years, Ms. Ross will again share the stage as a Supreme in a much publicized summer tour, but it won't exactly be the Supremes. The two surviving Supremes, whom Diana Ross performed with, will not be part of the tour. Replacing them are two women who joined the group after Ross left. In her interview with ABC's Jay Shadler last night, Mary Wilson complained that Ross would not even meet with her about reuniting the Supremes. Diane and I should have been there together, said, I'm ready to do this, you're ready to do it, let's do it. Why didn't that happen that way? She did not want to talk first. She wanted to do the business first. The numbers that have been bandied about the reunion are these. 12 to 15 million dollars for Diane. How about 15 to 20 million? 15 to 20 million. Mm -hmm. Of which you were supposed to get what? Two million and then maybe three. That's not enough? It's not enough? What do you mean enough? I don't think enough is a word. I think fair would be more of a the better word. Or deserving. Ooh, 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 baby Mary Wilson has gone her own way, still performing the music of the Supremes as part of a Motown oldies tour. But she carries with her the bitterness of a professional life, she says, forever changed. Diana, all this must be very painful for you. Actually, it makes me quite sad because I do think that uh, we need to answer some of these things that are really not correct. Well, let's go through some of the right. uh, accusations that have been made that Mary Wilson has said. Yes. How do you feel about her accusation that uh, she was offered an insulting amount of money to join you in the tour? She said uh, two to three million dollars. You know, I really didn't want to get into the numbers of the tour. I did not um, negotiate with her. Actually, you did not do the negotiating? No, I did not. I was planning to do my own promotional tour across Europe to promote the new album. And Scott Sanders, who is a wonderful friend of mine, said, wouldn't it be nice to add a Supreme segment to the show? Of which I said, that sounds good. That's a good idea. Let's do more of the music. And I called her on the phone. I said, look, have you heard the gossip? The fans really want a reunion tour. Are you interested in this? From the beginning of the conversation, the first thing she said was, what took you so long to call? Mm -hmm. And I'm saying it sort of nicer than she did. Uh, I said, look, I thought maybe you'd be happy about this. I talked to the promoters. The promoters came back saying, yes, they'd love to do it. They made me an offer. They made Cindy an offer and Mary an offer. Was never enough. Barbara, I think Cindy if we... Cindy Birdsong was the other yes, um, yes. member of the original Supremes. Now, I think if we had offered her the moon, she would not have uh, been happy. I doubled their offer so that she could come and do this tour. She didn't have to pay for anything, not a hotel room, not a car, not a gown, not a music arrangement, not a set, nothing. She would, all she needed to do was show up. Diana, Mary Wilson said that she feels that she deserved more because I'm quoting, because of her significance as a founding member of the group. You know what? She was making, I heard her say, a million dollars a year. They gave her, they offered her for 
30 shows double that, and I doubled that. While we are on the subject of money, since Mary Wilson brought it up, she <laughs> said that you are making 15 to 20 million dollars for this tour. Can I we wish. Ask you, you wish. I wish. Can we ask you how much you are getting paid? <laughs> no, I can't because... But not that. Most of my uh, money is in percentages. Mm -hmm. If we do well, I do well. So it's not, it's not like that. I want to show you just a little something from last night's interview and then yes. ask you about it. Okay. A little clip. There is a certain thing that, about Diane that has always been the way she is, period, since she was, since I knew her at, at the age of 13. And that would, that would be, she wants everything herself. Have you known all of these years, she talks about since you were 13, that Mary Wilson had this kind of resentment? No, I think the unhappiness came when when things started not to work that well in her life. She's had a lot of difficulties. I think she's coming from a lot of pain. And a lot of times when you're unhappy, you have to find some place to throw that to you. You, you, you know, she's targeting me. And I see such unhappiness in her, coming out of her. You know, I don't know that I can change that. I don't know that I could really change how she feels inside. I don't think there would be anything that anybody could do to make her happy. Is there anything you could say to her? What I'm saying right now, I send her all my love. I can't, you know, do any more. I don't know what I can do. I can sit down and talk to her, but do you think it's going to change her feelings? Well, if it did change If she's it. been harboring this, you know, for 30 years or more, I don't know that I could. Is there anything that you could say tonight, or would want to say tonight, that might make it possible for you to work with her? Um... I basically, uh, in my heart, know that um, it would be very hard for me to work with her on stage. I think at a certain point, you need, I need to let go, because I did try, I've called, I called, I even called at Christmas time saying, I got the promoters, they're excited, let's do it. There was no return call. Mm -hmm. When people say, uh, this is Diana Ross and the Supremes, it really isn't the Supremes, what do you say? Well, I think, uh, She's been working as Mary Wilson in the Supremes, and she's been singing my songs all, you know, and it's not her voice. I mean, I had a solo career for 30 years. I've been singing Supreme songs. I want to go back to something else that was said by Mary Wilson. She said you were all equal until you began a, a love affair with Barry Gordy. Oh. And she said that's the reason that you were made the star, and that you were pushed out in the front. I'm not going to defend that. I, I think the audience knows that that's my voice on all those songs, and it, it had nothing to do with my relationship with Barry. I think he's a wonderful... He gave me an opportunity to shine. Barry believed in me. Barry sponsored me doing Lady Sings the Blues. He probably believed in me more than I believed in myself. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I just think he's a very special man. Did he... Was he the one who thought you should do a solo act? Uh, the name was changed to Diana Ross and the Supremes, the same as was changed with Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, uh, Martha Rees and the Vandellas. It was all done in a purpose to build us in a bigger manner, not just a group. The rest of the groups did not become victims, as I said. Mary's been able to create her life by, you know, this, like she's a victim, like someone's doing things to her. Mary also forgets that I contributed to her life when she was having difficulty. I think she's forgotten all about that. I wish that she would have taken the offer. I couldn't get involved in that. I actually stayed away from it on purpose because I didn't think that I should have been involved. But then when it didn't work, I offered more, and it still wasn't enough. I want to talk about this concert. I'd rather give my money to the charities. <laughs> Your recent television special was called The Divas. Now, it used to be that to be called a diva, Diane, <laughs> was not a compliment. I mean, divas were considered monsters. No, no not really. really. Wasn't it prima donnas that were the oh, prima donnas? <laughs> Does diva describe you? Do you like being called a diva? Yes, I do, actually, right now. Um, I like the idea that women are able today to take responsibility for their lives and, it, and have the strength of character to say, you know, you know, I, I did this, I want credit for it, or I did this and I need, you know, I'm sorry, or I, I need to be free. But I think it has to do with giving, it has to do with growth, it has to do with wisdom. It takes a long time to get to be a diva. I mean, you got to work at it. I have to ask you. Yes? Is that your real hair? <laughs> I know what you know. In the <laughs> early days, you were just all different wigs. My, my, you know, it's so much simpler if you can find a way that your hair looks natural. Should I ask you if it's yours, Barbara? It is, as a matter of fact. It doesn't look as if, you know, I think I got to do a little bit to it. But, yeah. So this is this is a little addition this here. Is, this is me, and it's addition. It's like you know, okay. added on. You know, you see. Right. We've been talking about 
some difficult things, but Oprah Winfrey has said that when she saw you as a Supreme, it changed her life. She realized that a young black woman could make it. Star Jones has said this to me. That must give you a very good feeling that you have been able yes. to inspire yes, it does. so many. It's, it's, it's so important because that's really what I've always wanted to stand for is good image. And it's about the image, what we did during a time when it was really difficult for white America to accept black music. They called it race music. We were able to bridge a gap there. And it was such an, an amazing time that right now it's really a good idea that we can reclaim our legacy. I'm, I'm proud of what we stood for, very proud of what we stood for. Despite all the hurt feelings, the music of the Supremes cannot be touched.